Hi, I'm Dr. Eduardo de la Cruz at Loomis Basin Inquiry Medical Center. I'm one of the vets here, and I like uh, and enjoy lameness, so we're going to be talking about lameness today. So this is Gus. He's one of our um, blood donors. We've had him here for several years. He's been a good buddy for us. He's helped a lot of horses um, here at the clinic. And so we're gonna use him today for a demo on palpation and what we look for. That's one of the steps that we use for lameness evaluation. Uh, we usually start at the neck, at least I do. Every veterinarian is a little different. So whatever your vet does is their style. Um, I start palpating the neck. I go through both sides of the neck. Then I usually come through the withers and then go further back to the back, lumbar region, and then go back to the rump. Um, once I've palpated all these regions here, then I go to the limbs and then I start working on the limbs. Um, it would be a great idea if you at home palpate your horses every time you groom them, because that's gonna help you determine and figure out some things as the horse changes or if anything new comes up, you'll be able to see that at that time and detect it. So I usually start by palpating the shoulder, then the elbow, and come back through the front, and then the knee. I usually ask for the limb, or you can palpate it on the ground, whichever, one, whichever way works for you. Then once we get the limb, I'll palpate through the top of it, palpate the knee or the carpus. Then I can come and palpate three times through here. The reason we go three times, most of us do, is because we got three structures. We got the superficial tendon, we got a deep tendon, and then we got a suspensory ligament. And so we got to palpate each of those individually. Then we'll palpate behind the knee, palpate the fetlock joint, pastern joint, heel bulbs, and then I flex them. So flexions are important, so we'll do passive flexion is what I call it first. So I'll, I'll put flexion, I'll flex the bottom of the digit or the lower limb flexion that incorporates the fetlock joint, pastern joint, and the coughing joint that's inside of the hoof. Once I do that, if I get no response, I come back up, and then I do an upper limb flexion that incorporates a carpus or the knee, the elbow, and the shoulder, and then we put a little pressure, and I call it passive because we're not actually trotting the horse afterwards. We'll talk about um, dynamic flexions in a minute. Once I'm done there, I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna start palpating the muscles uh, of the hind end. We'll palpate the stifle. The joints of the stifle are right here in this region. This is actually the true knee of the horse. Uh, everybody calls the front the knee, but this is actually the true knee, like, just like ours. Then I'll palpate the rest of the limb. I'll come around, palpate the hock. This is our hock area. I'll palpate the hock, make sure they're okay. Palpate the tendons on the front, tendons on the back, suspensory ligament. I'll do a, a flexion of the fetlock or the lower limb flexion and then I'll do a full inflection and release the horse. While we're at it, we make, wanna make sure we palpate these muscles on the back region here because these muscles do have and do get injured over time in some cases. And then that one of the other things that I do on every lameness evaluation is I'll hoof test a horse. Hoof testing is important to determine if there's any soreness of the foot itself so I will grab my hoof testers and start pinching different areas of the foot. And that gives us an idea on how the horse is doing as far as foot-wise is concerned. We come across the heels, across the frog, and do the entire toe. Uh, that way, if there's any sore spots, we can get those as well. So now we're gonna do dynamic flexion, very similar to the passive flexion. The only difference, we actually trot the horse. Today, we won't do it. Um, but we, all, all we want to show is that we're going to grab again the limb, put my, and every veterinarian does it a little bit different, I put my hand on the, on the carpus, and then I flex the lower limb. I get as close to the ground as I can. I hold this for 30 to 45 seconds, and then I release the horse. Then the horse gets trotted away. Once it trots away, we'll, what we're looking for is any difference in the lameness. Sometimes, remember, we got to look at the attitude of the horse also. It's not just whether he's head bobbing or not. Sometimes they pin their ears when they're uncomfortable and things like that. So the next flexion that we do is the upper limb flexion. So this one again, we lift them up, we put pressure on the carpus, elbow and shoulder, and we hold them here for a minute, minute and a half, 
and then we jog the horse away again to see if the horse is sore. Hind end, very, very similar. We come around, we do distal limb first, the lower limb with a digit. Again, flex the fetlock, pastern and coughing joints, lower as much as you can. Horses tend to tolerate, tolerate this pretty good, most horses do. And then again, 30 seconds or so, and then release the horse. Trot them out and see what changes in the lameness. Last but not least, another common one is to do the full limb or upper limb flexion. This one, again, puts, uh, incorporates a hock, stifle, and the hip. And so this one we hold for about a minute, minute and a half, and then we release the horse. Last one that some veterinarians do, and there's a few more that you can also add to this program, is what they call a stifle. It isolates the stifle a little bit better, and it's just a stretch all the way back. We do that on all the limbs, if necessary. If we have one limb that we just worked focusing on, then we'll do just that one limb at that time. Uh, once we have all four limbs or the limb that we are interested in all set up, then we're good to go. So our next step is watching the horse at a walk. In this video, we're gonna see how this horse is tracking and how this horse is doing at a walk. This horse is actually comfortable, so I don't put a lame one yet, but we'll see one even eventually. So you can look at this horse um, as it's walking down. What we're looking at is foot placement. We're looking, make sure he's not coming into the middle on the hinds, um, tracking this way, or he's landing on the lateral side, and then, uh, which will be the outside of the foot. It's particularly many horses will do it on the front feet where they land on the outside first and then flatten out. Uh, but that can be balanced if necessary. If it's too dramatic, then yes. As you see the horse coming towards you, you're gonna be looking mostly at the front feet as it goes away. You're gonna be looking at the hind feet or hind limbs and fore limbs. And this horse is nice and comfortable. It's bright, ears are up, he um, looks happy, and that's what we're looking for. We're gonna look now at a horse in a circle at a walk. That's actually one of my favorite uh, areas to evaluate because we can miss some of the things on the straightaway, even at a trot that we won't miss on a circle, or at least are more highlighted in a circle and we'll go through some of those things as we go forward. In this video, you see this horse, um, he's crossing. Um, Kristen, my technician, she's making this horse walk in a circle and cross his front feet. That's what we want. We want this horse to, we're trying to force this horse to cross his feet. Why is that? Because some of these horses that have um, discomfort on the heel area or navicular bones or even at the knees will not cross over or will hesitate crossing over. But this horse, you can see, is pretty comfortable. Um, he wants to cross. He sometimes hesitates just because he's not sure what we're asking of him. Um, but you can see that he crosses comfortably. His head is still bright. His neck is nice and in a correct position. He occasionally will lift his head as he's trying to figure out where he's going. But you can see that he's turning nice and comfortably uh, without hesitation. So the horse we just looked at, on the previous video is a horse that is comfortable. Now I'm gonna show you a horse that is not comfortable in a circle. This horse has um, different issues, but the main key that I want you to focus on this, this new video is to look how this horse is landing on the front feet. If you look at this horse turning around, you can see that it lands very, very heavy on the toes. He does not want to cross over he shuffles and does not want to cross over. Very heavy on the toes. Just keep watching those toes hit the ground on the front feet. This horse never crosses. He hesitates, mm. he's shuffling, and that is the key to a horse that has discomfort on the heels typically. It could be from other things, but the things that at least for me personally come to mind are heel discomfort, navicular disease, knee problems. That's why we do the flexions. That's why we do the palpations and we do the hoof sensitivity, hoof testers to see what, what is going on with these horses. So this is just part of the puzzle that we're putting together. So, so far we've seen a video of a comfortable horse. We saw a video of a, a horse that have heel pain or some discomfort on the back of the foot and it's shuffling as it turns. And now we're gonna see a different video with a different horse that has a different disease process. So this one is gonna be a horse that has toe pain, the opposite of the, of the previous video, which was heel pain. So a horse with toe pain will actually lean back. 
and let's watch this video and you'll see how this pony uh, starts to lean back as Christian is asking him to turn. So this is a completely different movement from the movement of the previous horse. Now, of course, this is fairly dramatic, but you can see how this pony actually leans back to get weight off of his toes and lands on the heels, complete opposite of the previous horse. Um, this horse has uh, horses that move like this typically have laminitis, or they can have an abscess on the toe on both toes on the front, uh, or they're probably cut too short to by the furrier or something like that, where they're having sole discomfort or, or at least discomfort on the front of the foot. Again, this little pony is doing much better. Now it's on medication, it's doing well. Now we're gonna switch gears a little bit and now we're gonna watch these horses actually trot. We're gonna watch the trot on the straight line first and then we'll watch other videos uh, to follow when we launch the horses. So we're gonna watch the trot first and the straight away. So as the horse is moving away from you, you wanna look at the hind end, you wanna look at the hips essentially and the rump and the movement um, as it's trotting away from you. If there's asymmetry, in other words, one side is moving more than the other, then the side that's moving the most will be the one that is sore. We're not gonna go into too much hind end and lameness today, but I want us to bring that up. As the horse is now moving towards you, then you're gonna see the, you're gonna focus on the head and placement of the front feet. So this is a comfortable horse, so you will not see any significant discrepancies on the length of the stride or the head bobbing or anything like that. But we're gonna watch a few horses later on that do have uh, lameness and are exhibiting lameness that's significant enough for us to evaluate. The next step on our evaluation would be to launch the horse. We can use soft ground, hard ground, uh, any of those work, ideally both, because horses may, be, horses may be sore on the soft ground and not on the hard ground, or the opposite, depending on what is going on with them, will allow you to tell, differentiate what's going on, hard versus, versus um, soft ground. So we'll look at a horse here in a second that is actually comfortable going on a circle as we launch them on a trot. So as we watch this video, we can see we're lunging him to the left. He's bright, ears are up, no tail switching. The horse feels very comfortable and he's very happy going in the circle. He's got plenty of animation. The uh, limbs are flexed and um, moving freely and evenly. Um, so he looks very, very comfortable to me in this, in this video right now. Now we have a different video of the same horse going in the same direction, but in slow motion. This is helpful uh, for owners to take videos of the horses and study these horses if they want to, their own horses to see if they see any discrepancies. Um, it helps us sometimes if we have a complicated case or something that's not adding up, that we can uh, slow mo them and see where they're at. And so it's the same horse, again, a comfortable horse. And let's look at that video together. So this video, as you can see, I want you to look at the horse initially, starts going nice and slow. Now I want you to pick, I don't care which front leg, but pick a front leg. And as it's on the ground, I want you to look as the horse releases that foot where the hind foot of that same side lands. If you look closely, it actually lands exactly where the front foot was. So that's what we call tracking and proper tracking. So this is why horses pull shoes sometimes when they're trotting because they overreach a little bit. But look at this horse, this horse is completely even. As he strides away from you, you'll see the front foot leave the ground and the hind foot goes right in the same pocket where the, where the hind front foot was. So again, that's good symmetry, slow motion makes it easier to see um, until you get enough experience where you can actually see that uh, at a regular speed. But this is very, very helpful now that we have these types of um, technology available to us to evaluate some of these horses. So now we have a horse on a harder surface that is actually sore. Um, this horse on this video, let's look at it and see that he's actually pretty sore. If you look at this horse, he's throwing the head up as soon as the right front foot touches the ground, right front limb. So the rules or the say, if you will, is down on sound. So the horse will lower its head on the sound limb and and increase his head or elevate his head on the unsound or the sore foot. Makes sense to me. If that foot is sore, the head goes up to put less weight on that limb. Um, so it does say it's down on sound. I do 
I like to see that head go up and that's that foot that I actually look at. So if we look at this one, I'm going to count it for you. I'm going to only going to focus on the right foot. Right, 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 right. This horse, if you see, every time that right foot limb hits the ground, the head comes up. And that's all I'm looking for. Once you can sequence or, or follow the speed of this horse, you can count just one limb and see what the head is doing and go from there. So now we're going to see the same horse. But the difference is, if you notice, this horse is not 100% perfect, but way improved from where he was. The reason being, we started numbing, or what we call blocking, his limb. So in order for us to determine where uh, the lameness is coming from, we first need to determine which limb is coming from. Once we determine that, we do our palpation, our flexions, our circles, our um, straightaways, all those things to figure out where it's, where it's heading. And then we finalize by, in many cases, blocking the limb. So blocking means that we're going to get a, uh, go over the nerves, put a little bit of anesthetic, and then numb that region. And we start from the, from the bottom up. So we start at the heels, then we start the, fo the whole foot, then we go from the pastern down, and, and so on and so forth. And that gives us a region as to where it's the discomfort coming from, because there's a lot of structures uh, in, that, in that region. Again, this horse, it's now on this video, this horse looks much, much better, not 100% by any means, but much improved. So now we know which area we need to address and how and what diagnostics we need to then finalize our diagnosis for this horse and our treatment plan. If you see, there's also an image to look at all the structures that are there. If you see in purple, you have a lot of tendons and ligaments. If you see the brown structures, you're going to see the joint capsules or the joints. There's also on the back of the foot, you're going to see some red lines those will be the vessels and then in yellow you're going to see the nerves so the nerves is what we're we're hoping to numb as we're trying to diagnose these horses and as you can see that's actually a very oversimplified image that you're looking at um, of all the structures that are in that foot but the, the idea is to give you a an idea really of how many structures are actually in there so when we see say the horse is heel sore because of the way it's moving and it's blocking, you need to realize it's not just the actual heels you can see, it's that there's a lot of structures on that foot that we need, to re we need to evaluate to then come up with a proper diagnosis and treatment. So this video just that we went through, it's just, we're just scratching the surface of, of lateness. That was just the basics. Um, every veterinarian has their own style and look at things different. You just have to call your vet and see what they want to do with your horse if you detect any lameness. Hopefully that video will help you then see what's going on, evaluate your horse, and then have a professional come out and really do a thorough evaluation and come up with an actual plan for your horse. Um, sometimes we need surgery, sometimes we need um, other treatments, injections, or more diagnostics in order to determine what we need to do with your horse.